The Pharaoh Hound is one of the oldest known domesticated dogs. He is a direct link to a distant past and has remained virtually unchanged for more than 5,000 years. Drawings and hieroglyphs of a dog nearly identical to today's Pharaoh Hound are found on many Egyptian tombs and monuments and is referred to in ancient documents as the red, long-tailed dog. But it was in Malta, where Phoenician traders brought the dog from Egypt, that the breed established itself and survived in its purest form. Even today, Maltese farmers jealously guard their hound's breeding, and the pharaoh hound has been named as the national dog of Malta. Successful breeding programs were not adopted in England until the early 1960s, and it wasn't until 1967 that the pharaoh hound began appearing in the United States. The breed was recognized by the American Kennel Club in 1979. You'll be seeing many pharaoh hounds during this presentation. Some are outstanding examples of the breed, others are less so. But all will help your understanding of the pharaoh hound. Now, let's begin. In general appearance, the pharaoh hound should present a picture of grace, power, and speed with a marked keenness for hunting, both by sight and scent. He is of medium size and must be graceful and well-balanced. He should have a noble bearing. The pharaoh hound's personality is one of his most remarkable traits. He is basically friendly, but can be quite reserved with strangers and must be allowed to make up his own mind about people he meets. His friendship cannot be forced. He is extremely inquisitive and intelligent with steady, dependable temperament. Equally remarkable is the pharaoh hound's famous blush, a deep rose color of the nose and ears seen when the dog is happy or excited. This is a trait carried from very early times, for the Egyptians speak of the dog glowing like a god. In your judging of the pharaoh hound, remember that the preservation of type is of the utmost importance in this breed. 5,000 years of selective breeding cannot be thrown away for the sake of whim or fancy. The loss of pharaoh hound type in any specimen you evaluate is the most serious of faults. What is meant by correct type will become evident during the course of this presentation. In size, males should range from 23 to 25 inches, females from 21 to 24 inches. Overall balance must be maintained. This dog and bitch are in good fit condition, neither too heavy nor too thin. A rule of thumb is that the tops of three vertebrae should be barely visible. A dog that is too thin or too heavy is not desirable. In body proportion, the pharaoh hound is slightly longer than he is tall. Let's begin our detailed evaluation of the pharaoh hound with the head. It should be in proportion to the body, neither too small nor too large. Although there is some variation in head types, the head should resemble a blunt wedge like this. The top of the skull should be parallel with the foreface. The skull itself is long, lean, and chiseled, while the foreface is slightly longer than the skull. The stop is slight. This dog's head is not correct. The muzzle is shorter than the skull. Remember the muzzle should be slightly longer than the skull. And this dog is down-faced, lacking parallel planes, which is a fault. Here, the head appears too heavy throughout, with too much stop and a rounded skull. You can see how the noble, elegant expression is marred. This head is correct, with the top of the skull parallel to the foreface and a slight stop. The muzzle is slightly longer than the skull. Broad skulls and narrow muzzles are not typical. From the front, you can see the clean lines of the head. 
Although the cheeks are muscular, they do not bulge, but form an uninterrupted line. There should be no hollow under the eyes. This cheekiness is undesirable. The loose skin on this head is also undesirable. The key to your judging of the pharaoh hound head should be this clean, lean look, with the skin fitting closely. There should be no sign of loose skin or drooping thick lips. This dog's nose is also correct. It is flesh colored and may be lighter or darker depending on the coat color. No other nose color is allowed. Jaws should be powerful, with strong teeth, meeting in a scissor's bite. Full dentition is desirable. Note that undershot or overshot bites, like this, are false. Eyes are oval-shaped and moderately deep-set. They are amber-colored, like this, and should have a keen, intelligent expression. The eyes, too, may change color somewhat when the dog blushes, but otherwise the amber color should blend with the coat. These light eyes detract from expression. Note, too, that slit eyes, round eyes, or eyes set too close together are all faulty. Blue eyes are very undesirable and are faulty. Ears are another important component of expression. The pharaoh hound's ears are medium-high set and are carried erect when the dog is alert. There are two types of pharaoh hound ears, one with a smooth interior and one with a crease or fold inside the ear. Both types are correct. In either case, the ears are broad at the base, fine and large. The ears must be very mobile, as seen here. These soft ears, which are not able to be carried erect, are undesirable. As are these large, low-set ears, carried almost sideways to the head. Both are faulty. This is the correct ear set, medium-high. Note again the broad base and the characteristic mobility. Like the nose and eyes, the inside of the ears will also turn a deep rose color when the dog blushes. Now let's consider the pharaoh hound's neck and body. The neck is long, lean, and muscular like this. There is a slight arch, allowing the head to be carried high. There should be a clean throat line with no sign of loose skin. This neck is too short and thick, distorting the dog's balanced appearance. A ewe neck like this, or a long weedy neck, are also faulty. The neck should be firmly set into the shoulders, which are long and sloping, like these. They should be well laid back meeting the upper arm at about a 90-degree angle. The shoulder blade and upper arm are nearly equal in length. A line dropped from the withers to the ground will pass through the elbow. From the front, you can see the clean outline of the shoulder blades. Muscling should not be bulging, but rather should lie flat. There should be good width and depth of chest. This dog is very narrow and has a very shallow chest. And these straight shoulders are faulty. Remember that the pharaoh hound is a coarser and must have the proper front angulation for agility and speed. This is typical front angulation in the pharaoh hound. There should be distinct withers like these. The forelegs are straight, with the elbows well tucked in. The distance from withers to elbow should be about the same as from elbows to ground. 
Note that the pasterns are strong and slightly sloping. Feet are strong, well knuckled and firm with thick pads. Dew claws may be removed from the front legs and must be removed from the rear legs. The feet point straight ahead, turning neither in nor out. They're used like a strong hand, allowing the dog to grasp harsh terrain and pull the dog forward. Weak pasterns, which slope too much, and these upright pasterns, are incorrect. From the front, see how the forelegs are straight and parallel, with the elbows held close to the body. The feet point straight ahead, turning neither in nor out. This dog's elbows are pinched in under the body, and the feet point out. This is faulty. From the side, note again the long, sloping shoulder blade, almost equal in length to the upper arm. The legs are straight, strong, and well-boned, with well-knuckled and well-padded feet. See how the brisket reaches almost to the elbows. A brisket reaching beyond the elbow will interfere with tight turns required of a coursing dog. The pharaoh hound's body should be lithe with an almost straight top line like this. The ribs are well sprung and there is a moderate tuck up. There is a slight rise of the back over the loin and a slight slope from croup to root of tail. At no time should the rise over the loin be higher than the withers, nor should the back roach like this. The top line should not sag, as seen here. In proportion, the body should be slightly longer, measured from breast to haunch bone, than the dog's height measured from withers to ground. What about this young dog's body? It appears too short, being nearly equal in length to the height at withers. Long, weedy bodies are also not typical. This well-balanced body is slightly longer than the height at withers, with an almost straight top line, the highest point of which is at the withers. Moderation is the overall impression, with no extremes to distract the eye from the desired balanced, graceful outline of this breed. With the proper slight slope of croup, the base of the tail will be set well, like this. The tail is medium set and is fairly thick at the base. It tapers to the tip. The tail should reach below the point of hock when the dog is standing, but will be carried up and curved when the dog is moving. This high set tail on a flat croup and this low set tail on a steep croup are both incorrect. This tail is too short as it does not reach to the hock. A tail always tucked between the legs like this or tucked when the dog is moving is a serious fault of temperament. The pharaoh hound's hindquarters are strong and muscular in keeping with the breed's hunting coursing purpose. There should be a moderate sweep of stifle and a well-developed second thigh. The rear angulation should balance that of the front, as seen here. Hocks should be well-defined, well let down, and perpendicular to the ground. This dog is over-angulated in the rear, which throws him out of balance with his front. This rear is much too straight, with little hock definition. From the rear, you can see the powerful muscling in buttocks and thighs. Hocks are well let down and parallel to each other. The pharaoh hound's coat is short and glossy, ranging from fine and close to slightly harsh. There should be no feathering anywhere on the body or tail. There may be a very soft, dense, and short undercoat. Scars, due to injury incurred in day-to-day -day field work, 
may blemish the coat, but should not be penalized. As for color, the Faro hound ranges from tan through deeper shades to chestnut. Although the deeper shades are preferred by some breeders, any color within the range allowed by the standard is permissible, and paler shades should not be penalized. The standard also allows for certain white markings. The white tip on this tail is desirable, but lack of a white tail tip should not be penalized. This white star on the chest is also permissible and can be any shape. As is the white seen on these toes. Although a slim white snip on the center line of the face is permissible, this head has too much white. Note especially the excessive white on the forehead, which is undesirable. This white star on the chest that extends up the throat is too large and is not desirable. Flecking or other white markings not mentioned in the standard are undesirable. Any solid white spot on the back or neck, shoulder, or any part of the back or sides is a disqualification. Remember that any color from a beige tan to a deep reddish copper is allowed with no preference given to any shade. There may also be shading within the overall coat color, often darker down the back and lighter on the neck and shoulder blades. This shading is also acceptable. Also keep in mind that pharaoh hounds tend to turn gray as early as five years of age. Rather than mistaking this graying for white miss marks, judges should be sure to ask the steward to ascertain the dog's age. The pharaoh hound's gait should be free and flowing. See how the dog covers ground well without any apparent effort, with the head carried fairly high. There should be good reach in front and powerful drive from behind. Coming at you, the front legs should move straight forward, never being thrown out to the side or coming in under the dog. Single tracking is not a breed trait. Going away, the hocks remain parallel to each other, and the rear legs move in a line with the front legs. You can see the power of the hind legs, with the pads clearly visible. This dog is moving too close in the rear. This dog is tracking too wide in front. This dog is lifting its feet too high, not reaching well forward. There is too much wasted motion. Here again is correct movement, free, flowing, apparently effortless. See how the back remains firm. Remember that preservation of correct pharaoh hound type is of prime importance. Balance, grace, power, and speed are the hallmarks of the breed. There should be no exaggerations. The pharaoh hound must never be coarse or heavy, nor should he appear racy or overly fine. Clean, hard lines and a noble bearing are the culmination of centuries of careful breeding. It is essential that these traits be preserved for generations to come.